Hey 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 space travelers, this is a bonus tutorial from the Space VFX Elements series by AD Burroughs and Gleb Alexandrov. I'm the right nerd here and AD is overly enthusiastic nerd on the left. Today we'll see how you can create the black hole. And initially I wanted to call this tutorial how to create a supermassive black hole devouring a pirate ship. Why pirate ship? Because we love pirates and we are pirates to some degree. But afterwards, actually, I thought, what if I just replace the pirate ship with a joke about the pirate ship? So keep watching for the joke, right? Okay, guys, let's jump straight in the tutorial. And the first step would be to create the environment. That is the space, okay? Let's make sure that we set the compute device to GPU. Of course, if you have a decent video card. And let's switch to the rendered viewport mode. And the easy way to create the black hole is to open the environment tab and set the environment color all the way to black. Thanks for watching. All this stuff. You created the black hole. Quick and easy, almost too easy. Let's try another way. Let's set the viewport mode back to solid and create the UV sphere. Let's make it larger by pressing S and scaling it up. And now it looks like a disk sphere. Let's press T to open the left tool shelf and press smooth shading. And now I'm pressing N to bring up the right tool shelf and you have different selection of matte cups. We can choose something like that. And that's already looking like a black hole, but you can choose the white hole if you feel like a hipster, I don't know. Okay, let's set it back to a gray material. And I'm pressing Z to see the wireframe, and I think we can add some subdivisions. Go to the modifiers tab and add the subdivision surface modifier. Crank up the number of subdivisions to two to make it more smooth and hit apply. Now I'm going to add the pre-made environment for this scene. I'm going to File, Append, navigate into my file with the space environment. Go to Object, select the environment and click Append from Library. So what I just did is appended this sphere with the space texture. We need some kind of environment because we'll be simulating the gravitational lensing effect. That is essentially reflection and refraction. So we need something to reflect and refract, okay? I'm pressing G to position this sphere roughly at the center of coordinates. And I'm gonna click and drag on this corner to create the additional window. For the bottom window, I'll switch to the rendered mode. And the top window will be the node editor later on. And that 3D cursor bothers me, so I'm pressing N. And in the display tab, I'm clicking only render to get rid of the cursor once and for all. Let's now come over to the render settings and change some settings. I'm going to the sampling tab and setting the preview samples to 100. And in the performance tab, I will change the start resolution. I set it up to something like 512. This will help us to avoid the jagged look of the viewport while it updates. And also I'm going to rename the sphere, call it black hole, and go over to the materials tab press new to add the new material, call it also black hole, or you can type something more funny if you want. Okay, and the step number two is set up the reflection. If you watched Interstellar, you will know this effect. It was called the wormhole or something like that. Okay, so let's switch to the node editor, delete the default diffuse shader, and add the glossy shader instead. Hook it up to the surface output, and now we see the reflection. What I want to do here is reduce the roughness of the glossy shader because I want it to look perfectly smooth. As if it doesn't have the substance of its own, it just reflects the world around it. Or just imagine that it bends the light rays with the gravitation, something along these lines. And to better see what we are doing, I propose to increase the brightness of the display. Let's go to the Color Management tab, click on Use Curves, and crank up the curve a little bit. Right, that looks a lot better. Now let's go to the node editor. Press Shift A to go to the add menu, select input, geometry. I want to influence the normal input of the glossy shader to kind of pinch the reflection. All right, so let's drag the normal output over here. Let's press Shift A, go color, mix RGB node, and insert it over here. Even with the default settings, you can see the effect. For example, you can change the max factor and watch how the reflection just stretches. This is looking very cool. Let's add the layer weight node. 
We'll be using the facing output, so let's drag it to the second socket of the mix node. Now we can tweak the blend parameter and see how it folds into itself. Mm -hmm. And don't you think that it already looks epic? See, only five minutes into the tutorial and we are on the verge of epicness. Okay, so I'm going to set the mix factors to something like 0 0.16. That looks right to me. And the blend parameter, I will set it to 0 0.12. Alright, so this is the first layer of the black hole. Let's add the frame around these nodes. So go layout, frame. Stretch it like this to encompass all the nodes. And now press N. Call it somehow, just type the reflection, for example. Also, let's crank up the label size to make the text more readable and set up the color. This is not obligatory. This is just for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select the lighter blue color just to cheer you up. And the next step would be to set up the refraction. All right, let's move the material output node to the right to create some space for our other nodes. Now press Shift A, go shader, refraction. Drop it over here and let's connect it to the surface output. This will allow us to just preview the refraction shader without any other shaders. So it behaves like a glass. What we can do to make it more interesting is tweak the index of refraction. What I want to do here is create the lens-like effect, because it's a black hole. After all, it should have some kind of gravitational lensing. So this is the first layer of the gravitational lensing. Let's set the index of refraction to something like I don't know, 1.2. Hopefully this will allow us to have the interesting fall-off of the refraction towards the edges. And what I want to do next is create the completely pitch dark hole in the center of the sphere. We can do it by influencing the color of the refraction. So I'm going to add the layer weight node, hook the facing to the color. And to be able to control the contrast of this effect, let's add the color ramp node. By positioning the flags closer to each other, we can increase the contrast. Let's move this left guy over here, and now we can see the hole. It's as close as you can get to the visual representation of nothingness in Blender. I'm gonna tweak the color ramp flags to create a more gradual transition from the center to the edges of the sphere. Alright, let's reconnect the glossy shader to the surface output. Now press Shift A, go Shader, Add Shader. What I want to do here is add the refraction on top of the reflection without replacing it. You can see that we overlaid the refraction on top of the reflection and that allows the light rays to bend over the sphere. That almost looks right to me. There is something wrong about the refraction, though, because I don't know what. We'll solve that in the future, I guess. Yes, yes, the future holds the answers. But for now it looks sufficiently good. Mm -hmm. Let's press B and drag the selection rectangle around these nodes and press Shift P afterwards to draw the frame around it. Call it refraction, change the label size and the color if you wish. I always change the color because I love colorful stuff. And by the way, have you seen Fifty Shades of Grey? What do you think about it? And why on earth I had to mention it? I don't know. Let's add the gravitational lensing. That sounds very scientific to me. Okay, let's first add the mix shader. And after that, let's press Shift A and add the glass shader. This will be the third and the last element for our black hole. And essentially it's the most crucial element, because it will allow us to create the space warp effect. Okay, so let's connect it to the second socket of the mix shader. And what we can do next is continue abusing the layer weight node. So let's go input, layer weight, drag the facing output into the index of refraction. And as I'm tweaking the blend parameter, you can see how the space around the sphere just warps. This is incredible. I felt like a nerd when I found this effect. And I'm so happy to share it with you. And especially if you press G and drag the sphere now, you can see how it pushes the space around it. That looks pretty convincing to me as a visual effect. Now we need to find the way to mix between this shader and the previous shaders. And let's do it by using the layer weight node once again. I'm pressing Shift D to duplicate it. Drag the face and output to the mix factor. 
And if you have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can press Ctrl Shift and click on the node to preview it. And I clicked twice because I want to preview the facing output. So you can see the black and white representation of the effect. We can add the color ramp node, Ctrl Shift and click on it. And now we can really fine tune the effect. For example, we can move these flags over here to stretch and warp the space only around the edges because I don't want it to affect the center of the sphere. Okay, so let's drag these things till the result looks right to us. Okay, I think we're getting close to the final look of the black hole. Or is it rather a wormhole? If you watched Interstellar movie, you'll remember this effect. They're flying into what they think is the alien artifact or whatever, and the walls of this tunnel are refractive. When I saw this in cinema, I thought, oh my goodness, I want to know how it's made. And now we're making exactly something like this, and it is looking great. Mind equals blown. But as I've mentioned before, something looks a little bit off. And in a moment, we'll take a look at how we can make it even more crazy. This will be the last step of this very exciting tutorial. So, final tweaks. It's the most important step of everything we do, I claim. Let's switch to this solid mode. Select all the polygons of the sphere. I'll press T to open the left tool shelf and click Flip Direction. What it does, it flips the polygons of the sphere and now the refraction behaves a little bit differently. For example, you can come over to the refraction set of nodes. Let's zoom in a little bit to see it better and set the index of refraction to uh, 0 0.8, for example. Yeah, 0 0.85. And now the refraction around the black hole looks more warped, stretched, I don't know, disturbed. And that, from my nerd perspective, is how it should look around such objects like black hole. And the last thing I'm gonna do is tweak the gravitational lensing falloff. After you did it, you can easily test the effect by pressing G and moving the sphere. It's a little bit hard to notice. Uh, you can press Shift F to go into the first person mode and just navigate around the object. And still I think there is a room for improvement. Okay, let's tweak it once more. Tweak, tweak, tweak. I'm gonna adjust the falloff of the gravitational lensing to really make it extreme. And I think that looks far more awesome. Now this supermassive giant monster black hole really bends the space around it. That looks gorgeous. Watch this. This is kind of a space porn, if I can make such a bad taste remark. And by the way, Gleb, you may ask, what about the pirate ship joke? Yeah, I promised a pirate ship joke, so here we go. You can travel inside the black hole to search for your pirate ship. I really hope it was funny enough. Was it? I really hope it was. Because the pirate ship is so gorgeous if you find it. But maybe there is nothing in the black hole and the cake is a lie. Okay, folks, that was Gleb Alexandro for the Space VFX Elements video course by Aidy Burrows and me. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you want to see more tutorials like this, uh, not exactly like this, but something like this, visit either cgmasters.net or creativestream.com, watch the demo for the Space VFX Elements, whatever, and thanks so much.